Jason Newland .com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis and my rumbling tummy for some reason. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I'd just like to thank you for listening and your support and please subscribe to this podcast. And just to let you know that I do have other podcasts that you may enjoy. There's the Let Me Bore You to Sleep, which uh, I talk for about an hour about absolutely nothing. And I do those pretty much daily. There's the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. Those recordings are longer. And uh, I do two versions. There's the about 30, 35 minute version of me just talking and then there's the 50, 50 minute version which includes music, background music by Kevin MacLeod I also do the sleep uh, relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks which is comprised of some deep relaxation sessions, some with and without music, relaxation techniques and some talks, long talks about a subject concerning stress or anxiety. So just to let you know there's different things that I do as well as trying to make one of these every day when I can. There may be a few background sounds unavoidable I'm afraid um, because it's 8 o'clock in the evening and it's still light outside and all that you know um, but I'm gonna do it anyway because the way I see it is this pretty much always going to be some kind of background sounds wherever you are even if it's just the sound of your home you know the walls or the, the loft or the central heating or maybe you've got a cat or a dog or maybe you've got other people or children in another room or a partner next to you in the bed moving or making a bit of noise a bit of sound so we don't, you know, if we only set ourselves up to only be able to sleep when it's absolutely silent, then I think we're not doing ourselves any favours. And I talk from experience here, because I spent many, many, many years of my life unable to sleep because of sounds. I, used to, I ended up wearing earplugs to block out the sounds because I couldn't sleep with background sounds. Now, I've taught myself how to do it. In fact, part of the reason I didn't like wearing the earplugs is because I ended up perforating my eardrum because I pushed them in too far. And I, I wore earplugs for years and years and years. So I'm just saying... You can, actually, you can actually invite the sounds to be part of the process because when you can hear sounds it means that the world is still turning and life is still happening. The world doesn't come to an end because we decide to go to sleep. There are millions of people doing night shift. Millions of people we have to stay up late at night. Millions of people wake your sleep during the day. So, it's not even necessarily just about sleeping. It can be, I think more importantly, about relaxing. Because if you lay in your bed and you decide to lay there for eight hours or six hours 
when you wake up or in the morning, you might think to yourself, I've had no sleep. But you will have done. You will have fallen asleep many times during that period. It's just, you don't realise it. It might not have been deep sleep, it might have been light sleep. But you will have fallen asleep. So, even when you're not relaxed, you will fall asleep. And even when you feel that you haven't slept, you have. Because we fall asleep. Because, let's face it, if you're laying down in your bed, the lights are off. There's no stimulus to keep you awake, other than your own thoughts. And eventually our own thoughts get muddled up with dreams. So although you're still thinking, oh, I'm thinking about stuff, you might actually be asleep. Maybe that's not occurred to you. But scientifically, if you're just plugged into a, um, a heart machine thing connected to your thumb, it will tell you by your heart rate exactly how often you fall asleep because the heart slows down everything slows down and it's amazing really so perhaps I mean it's just an idea and it might be a little bit annoying but perhaps you could start by changing the way you talk about sleep instead of talking about it in a way in a negative way I never sleep I can never get to sleep that kind of thing that's un it's unhelpful it's up to you but it's unhelpful because every time you say that you're giving a suggestion you're almost telling yourself to do something and your mind your brain your unconscious mind whatever will take that as a command that that's what you want more of so when you start saying to yourself I can sleep easily I can sleep naturally then your first response to that may be but it's a lie because I don't believe that but it isn't a lie because you've fallen asleep naturally and easily many times in your life hundreds and hundreds of times in your life you've fallen asleep easily Which means you can do it because you were born to do it. We learn how to uh, get in our own way when it comes to sleeping. We don't have to learn how to sleep. It's inbuilt. It's just nature. Just in the same way you can have a, a snake. Take a little snake away from its mum right from birth and it knows how to catch a little animal it knows naturally how to do it I'm not comparing humans to snakes but there's that inbuilt thing that's there right from the start I've got a, a little ferret that lives with me called Andre he knows how to dig it's his natural instincts is to dig no one had to teach him that. He learned, he just knew straight away. He also knows how to sleep. He sleeps maybe 18, 19 hours a day. No one had to teach him that. Not once has he come to me and said, Daddy, I can't sleep. You're making too much.
much noise. Doesn't care. He's going to sleep. Nothing is going to get in the way of him sleeping. Because he knows that sleeping is easy and it's natural to him. And he was born to be able to do it. Just like a fish is born to be able to swim. A fish doesn't need to learn how to breathe underwater or to swim. We don't need to learn how to sleep. We may need to unlearn those things that got in the way of us sleeping. But we don't need to learn how to sleep. It's almost like pressing the reset button in your mind just for that specific thing. The reset button for your sleeping ability. So you can actually go there in your mind, search in your brain and you can find that part of your brain responsible for you sleeping. And you can find that big button that says reset. Sleep. Reset sleep. Which means that you can reset your sleeping patterns to how you are born naturally able to sleep deeply so that your body and mind can recuperate and your body and brain can heal because that's what happens when we're asleep. We heal. We grow as people, we learn, we absorb the learnings from the day before. We're able to grow as people and to move forward and plan the future. So what you could do as you lay in bed, you could start to take control of those thoughts. Because you can only have a, a positive thought in your mind or a negative thought. You can't have both at the same time. So when you decide to focus just on the positive and you choose, because you can choose what you think about, you do have that choice, which is quite nice. You can start to think about the things that you want for yourself for the future. The life that you want to live in the future. Those wonderful things that are going to happen in the future. And you can start to plan it in your mind. Start to plan those wonderful things that are going to happen in the future. Planning it in your mind all the time knowing that you've pressed that reset button so this will just allow you to drift off to sleep and those positive thoughts will be absorbed into your unconscious mind while you sleep becoming part of you becoming part of you so that your mind knows to give you more of that. Your unconscious mind knows where you want to be. Where you want to go. What you want from life. And of course part of that is to sleep easily and naturally. And then when you get to the point and you know that you've pressed that reset button and maybe you want to press the reset button every night just to get yourself back to that point that you used to be in when you were younger where you would just lay down on your bed and your body would relax your head would touch the pillow and even if you were excited about the day ahead perhaps it was Christmas the next day Maybe you were going on a holiday 
maybe it was your birthday, maybe it was something really exciting the next day and you almost wanted to stay awake you still fell asleep when you wanted to stay awake you fell asleep because you were thinking about wonderful things you were thinking about you know what presents you were going to get for Christmas and you were thinking about maybe the holiday and how great it was going to be to go on holiday or maybe a birthday party the next day you were excited about that and you were thinking about that and as you have those positive thoughts in your mind your brain starts to slow down and you fall asleep It's almost the opposite to what may have been happening before when you may have been having thoughts that you didn't want and because you were trying to push them away it seemed to you seem to be staying awake doing it but when you think about something that you really like and you want those thoughts to continue because it feels lovely feels really nice and the more you try to hold on to those pleasant thoughts those thoughts of positivity the more you try to hold on the sleepier you get the more you try and stay awake the sleepier you get to the point where it's impossible to even know whether you're awake or you're asleep because you're drifting and you keep coming back and you drift away again and then even though you're sort of semi drifting you're trying to think about what it was you were thinking about but you can't quite remember it's just vague uh, it's in a distance and you can't quite grasp it you find yourself drifting again you find yourself drifting even further and then you don't know if you're awake or you're asleep because it no longer matters it no longer matters because you've pressed that reset sleep button when you press that reset sleep button a message gets sent to not just your brain but your entire body receives the message that when you lay down in your bed it's time to go to sleep when you lay down on your bed your body relaxes your head touches the pillow, your mind slows down and as you think about those positive things, things that you're looking forward to, the really happy thoughts, you start to drift and even though you may be enjoying the thoughts so much and the physical pleasure you get from those thoughts, you still drift away not knowing if you're awake or if you're asleep and then no longer caring because you realise that it doesn't matter whether you're awake or you're asleep because you feel so deeply relaxed and comfortable and happy just to be you you feel happy to feel so deeply relaxed in your body and in your mind and you can feel that cloak of safety protecting you at all times so you can feel secure.
Let's see. 